put it into a glass of water, you know, half a glass of water, and you look at the spoon, and then you look at the glass, and what the hell is that? The spoon's supposed to go like this, right? Mm -hmm. And look, as the light entered the water, the, the rays bouncing off the spoon bent, and it got what? Displaced to the side. That's called refraction. So I, I always laugh when I think that, that would, if you're lost in the forest, right, and you made a wooden spear, you found the stream and they were fish, and you say, good, I'm going to spear the fish, you'll probably miss it. Because you're seeing the fish here, but the fish is really here. The light has what? Refracted? And so hunters very quickly, the fish learn, you don't aim for where the fish is, you aim a little bit where, depending where the light is coming from, the front of the eye. If you keep aiming for the fish, you're going to be lost and hungry. <laughs> okay, you remember that? You know what survivor, you know what you do. test does not include the be happy taste and smell. Okay? If I don't test that. What should you do about taste and smell? Read it. What? When you have time? You don't have to what? Be tested on everything. Okay? If you learn the you learn uh, hearing, taste and smell would be what? Pretty easy. If you read that, and I'm not going to test you. Fair enough? Yeah. Okay? By the way, how many tastes do you have? How many different tastes? Just count them. How many? Maple? Sweet? Sour? Bitter? Salty? And? What do you have? You all know sweet, right? Sweet, sour, bitter, and salt. What's the fifth one? It's called, you know, ready? Umami. Not from umami, umami. You know what umami is? It's the distinctive taste of meat. You know how meat has a particular taste? And you know what you're really tasting when you taste meat like that? Remember the amino acids, the twenty? There's one called glutamic acid. Glutamate. Meat has a lot of glutamate. And I just heard recently, you're not going to believe it, they think they found a sixth taste. Yeah, I have to check that on the <laughs> but there are five tastes: sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. You can see how much meat is there. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I ask you to read this. There's nothing new here. Tells you what is sympathetic and what is parasympathetic. I can tell you quickly. You ready? Parasympathetic makes your pupil smaller, and parasympathetic causes the ciliary muscle to contract, so it moves towards the towards the lens. The lens what bulges. So reading is parasympathetic. Your lens bulges, and your pupil gets smaller. What is sympathetic? Sympathetic, your pupil gets larger. That you know, because if you're in a sympathetic state, you want to see everything, and you want to look also at what far distance, so your lens what relaxes, and you got sharper vision further away. Usually, I mean, if there's a tiger coming at you, you don't need close vision. You know why? You're already done. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to look at the tiger and say, oh, I can see you sharply. If you see him that sharply and he's that close, you are what? Breakfast and lunch or dinner. <laughs> Sympathetic, your enemy usually is what? Far from some distance beyond 20 feet. Nature thinks of everything. All right, here we go. New stuff. I know I repeat a lot of things, but that's okay for this chapter.
How many of you wear glasses? About a third. How many of you are nearsighted? Nearsighted, meaning you can read well, but you have trouble seeing the far. How many are farsighted? You can see afar, but you have trouble reading. How many are both? Okay, very few. Okay. Let me tell you why you're nearsighted. Don't blame your mother or your father. You're nearsighted or farsighted most of the time because your eyeball is too long or short. Okay? So if you're nearsighted, if you have an eyeball, I'm going to make it a little this big. That should be normal. Your eyeball is this big. Let's take a look at it. If you have a normal eye, don't you love this word? A normal eye where you focus what? Beautifully far and close. It's called emetrophic. Don't you love that word? Emetrophic. E-M-M-E-T-R-O. What if you're nearsighted? If you're nearsighted, you're myopic. You heard of that? Oh, you're so myopic, you're nearsighted. We use it also in a social sense, meaning you're just living in this world, you're not living in it. So if you're nearsighted, what's happening? Your eyeball is too long, and you go to focus something what, far away, and you can't reach the fovea. See the point with all the light rays converge? That's called the focal point. It's, it's the focal point <coughs> is at some imaginary point in front of the fovea. That's because when you're nearsighted or myopic, your eye can lose the norm. And here's what we're going to do. Remember how I told you light bends? We're going to fit you with a pair of glasses. And the glasses on the inside are going to have an inward curvature. And every time light goes, listen to me, from one medium to another of different density, air is what? Very low density. It's going to hit glass, which is what? High density. The light is going to bend. You with me? If you go from high to low, it's going to bend in the other direction. So if you look light in this room, it's going through here. There's no light. Bending. So look what happened here. This was focusing too early. So I'd like to what? Get it to focus here on the phobia. So it's going to hit this crazy lens, and that's going to make the light look, because it's curved inward, not go straight, but go uh, outward. And when it goes outward, it's going to hit the lens at what? An angle. See an outward angle? And now the lens can what? Focus it on the phobia. So if those of you who are nearsighted, who are the nearsighted ones? Okay? You got glasses like this. Okay? If you're farsighted, what's the problem? Your eyeball is too damn wide. Sure. And you're focusing the image at some point that's what? Beyond? So here, I'm going to give you a pair of lenses that are convex. And when it hits this, it's going to bend it inward. You know what I mean? See it? And it's going to hit your lens at an inward angle. And that's going to allow you to focus. And that's all you got to know. I'm not going to test you on this. Okay? But I wanted to tell you what nearsightedness and farsighted. In most cases, it's what? Your eyeball is either what? Too short or too long. You want to know what the other problem is? You may have what's called, this could be corrected, lazy eye. Your muscles, what? Are not working correctly. You know, they're not. Remember the ciliary muscle has to what? Contract in order for the lens to change shape. It's lazy on one side. So you know what you do? On the side that's good, what do you do? You patch it. And you make you use the lazy eye. It's like what? Lifting weights. We're going to make you use the lazy eye. So, and, then, and it works very well. Okay. Now, she had a question now to do. Um, does that eye grow or shrink as you get older because the lens does the lens because when I was younger I had 20-20 vision oh don't feel bad what do you got now 
I don't know. I don't know, but All right, that's I'll tell you what me. my vision was when I was young. I was tested for it. I had 20, 10 vision. That's very few people have that. That means I could see at 20 feet what the average person can only see at 10. I was the kid that would look at the marquee on the field two blocks away and say, oh, this is what's blank. Wow. Oh, this could but I later found out that when you have that acute vision, you're going to have focusing problems when I get older. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm reading. Do you know how you know you need it? You're reading okay, then you get another year older. <laughs> Two years later. <laughs> then you reach a point where your arms what? Too short. <laughs> <laughs> you get glasses. But I used to go to the um, eye exam, like the planet, and the guy would say, okay, read the third line from the bottom. And I'd say, I'll tell you who made the chart. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a joke. Because all of the commercial partners used to go to him. You know what he used to do? Yeah, I'll be right back. And he'd leave the room. And all the commercial partners would run up here studying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read the third line from the bottom. C F G M on the bottom. The pilots can't see. Okay? But it's okay. Uh, now you can wear glasses and you're fine. And he was in New York City. Everybody would go to him uh, through a commercial and memorize the third line from the bottom. Did you have a question? Then I'll take you. Um, so what about um, a stick? A stick? <coughs> <coughs> oh, okay. I'll do that. I'm going to come back to you. I forgot to do it. What is an astigmatism? Okay, explain it in the book. It's really good. Write it down. Easy. Here's your cornea. Go with it. And this is an astigmatism. I'll give you a couple. The cornea has areas with what? Uneven surfaces. So when the light hits it, it what? It bounces and you don't get a clear image. So the way you, you have an astigmatism? Yeah. So what they did on your glasses, they ground the glasses to make up, if she puts on her glasses correctly, to make up for the area with the astigmatism. The lens changes, right? Okay. Good. I'm raising your hand. Who else? She had a question. With um, laser surgery, they only replace the top layer of the cornea, mm -hmm. but doesn't that really stick being longer or shorter? Oh, yeah. Like I, I, I don't like that surgery. I don't know why. I've, I just, I've never it. seen it. Is it good? It's been a year, and I'm seeing that on Okay. What they can do is he had, <laughs> he had the surface of the cornea shaved. Mm -hmm. It changed the way it what? Bends light. It works. Okay. And, and so now, pretty, it's now. Been okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, in the beginning, um, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't trust it. I only had two eyes, you know. And how did they, did they use the laser one? They use the laser. They use the laser. I had That's a friend, same, now that he had it done, I mean, I won't let him worry. So what does he went in to have it done with the laser, and you know what happened? The laser changed its calibration on its own, and he ended up burning his retina. <laughs> Mm. He lost vision in one eye. Yeah. I mean, it's a lawsuit, but who cares? I mean, he just lost vision in one eye. They're pretty good now. Yeah, so now I can say it's okay. <laughs> but what I want to know is... And I'll tell you. How, <laughs> how did my eyes get this way? I mean, this side. Why, is it, why couldn't I just keep my 2020 vision? I don't know why. Because life's... I use the word, life's a bit. <laughs> and things go wrong. You know, you can ask the question, why did my arteries fly? fly? Why did you know, <coughs> I have other problems? I mean, I got a book home that doesn't deal with physiology. It's just anatomical anomalies, and it's just that things happen. You know, you started off as what? It's an egg and a sperm. And then you had to go, what, the two cells before the 16. And all the chemicals had to be what? Just right to say, these cells become this, these cells become that. 
And the development is really amazing. I don't require you to wait to board that up. At the end of each chapter, they do development, like development of the eye and development of the ear. I don't test you much. We don't have time. What I do development on, of course, is the repro. When we get to it, because it's really interesting. But that's life. You want to know the other problem? <laughs> the other problem is that we're living too long. You see, nature has designed you to what? Grow, have good reproductive organs, have two, three, four babies, whatever, take care of them. Nature has even allowed you to what? Live a little longer because we think nature has figured out, you know, through evolution, that if you live longer, you can help take care of the grandchildren. And then you're supposed to what? Drop dead. Okay? You're supposed to drop dead. And there's certain parts of your body that are completely, very poorly designed by nature. One of them are your joints. When you get older, most people develop what? Arthritis. Very bad arthritis. Now, if you were a primitive person living out in the wild, <laughs> You know, if that tiger comes, or that lion, and you've got arthritis, you're lunch. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you're running like this, and the tiger chasing you, you know? So, we have allowed us to what? Have an average lifespan now for men. Men have a shorter lifespan than women. You know why? Because women are average this. <laughs> but men have an average lifespan now about a your age, you guys should live to about 78, about 82. Okay. But the real problem is as you get older and older, you've got to hope that medicine can what? Keep up with that aging. You know, and, 